So uh, good evening, everyone. So our se evening session today, we will start with the first speaker, Professor Marco Lopez from the University of uh, Alicante, Spain. Today, he will talk about uh, new representation of the normal cone to the domain of the supplement function and subdifferential calculus. Please, okay. Professor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm thankful to the organizers just for giving me the opportunity to stay uh, again in Australia to a certain distance, but <laughs> uh, from the mental point of view, I'm in Australia with all of you. And uh, my presentation has this title today, and the results I'm uh, just showing to you are um, gathered in a couple of papers, one already submitted. Uh, together or co-authored by Rafael Correa and Abderrahim Hantut and the other with the same authors, but is still in production, is in the oven, close to leave from the oven. Okay. Uh, the way, um, in order to understand what uh, we try to do, uh, let me just uh, jump from the first uh, slide and go to this one uh, concerning the preliminaries. Suppose that I have uh, this uh, arbitrary family of functions Ft. Eh? It's an arbitrary because the index set capital T can be infinite. So we can uh, handle with infinitely many functions. Uh, all of them are uh, proper convex and lower semi-continuous. So they belong to the space or to the family gamma naught of x. And suppose, uh, this is not for free in infinite dimensions that the relative interior defective domain of the supremum function is non-empty. In this case, uh, quite long ago, in this paper with Abderrahim and Constantine, we uh, provided uh, this formula for the subdifferential of the supremum function. Here, F is the supremum function. So my main objective in the last years with these people, with these friends from Chile, was just to characterize, to give more and more formulas, more explicit, some of them more theoretical, but in any case, I'm also worried about or, or concerned with the beauty of this subject, you know? And uh, we succeeded to this, this formula in which the subdifferential uh, is given by means of the intersection of over all the possible positive epsilons or the closed convex hole of this sum here. Observe that here we have a epsilon subdifferentials because the functions are in gamma naught, these are non empty for every positive epsilon. And here we are involving exclusively to the uh, so called epsilon active uh, functions, are those which in the reference point takes an epsilon close value to the supremum. And the value is quite close to the supremum value. Okay, this formula is valid for every point in the defective domain. And here, the closure convex hull, the closure uh, uh, is taken uh, res with respect to the weak star topology in the dual space, of course. Uh, um, let me uh, say that uh, the, one of the objectives in this couple of papers that I'm uh, today talking about is just to eliminate this term here the normal cone, and just to replace it by something relating only of the rest of functions which are not in this set of epsilon active. I don't want normal cones in my formulas. I want, I would like to get symmetrical formulas without any normal cone, involving perhaps all the functions, not only these ones which are epsilon active, okay? In uh, these papers, uh, in this paper, actually, with Machir Wall, we obtain um, in a different, just using a different construction, the same formula under different assumptions, similar type of assumptions. The convex cone generated by this translation of defective domain must be closed, or the relative interior of the same cone must be non empty, where here, the cone of A represents the convex cone, not just the cone, convex cone generated by A. Okay? 
if we want uh, just to drop out these interior reticulous closeness conditions, which are in the formulas in the previous slide, I need more structure or I need to pay a certain price. Always I have to pay certain price for increasing my generality. I need, in fact, to involve this family. This is the family of uh, all the finite dimensionals, all the, and sorry, all the finite dimensional linear subspaces or my underlying space X passing through the point X, okay? In this very uh, general setting, uh, in the same paper with Hantut and Zalinescu, we got or we proved this, this is the most general formula. We have here double uh, filtration. I have to intersect with respect to all the uh, linear, finite dimensional uh, linear subspaces and over all the epsilon greater than, uh, uh, greater than zero, epsilon greater than zero. Observe that here, this uh, intersection, the interior of this convex set is non empty because this set is finite dimensional. This is what is observed here. Related formulas to this one, which is the most general, as I said, can be uh, found in this paper with Chong Li and Ji, and also in this couple of papers with Vol. Okay, in the compact setting, uh, the compact setting is becoming important in the first part of my talk. Uh, that means that I'm assuming certain structure. This structure is the index set. Uh, remember that this is the index set of the functions. The index set is assumed to be compact. And the mappings, when I fix every z, this is a mapping assigned to each t, the value of the function ft at this point, sorry. These functions must be upper semi-continuous. Okay, in such a case, what is, uh, I, can, uh, I can be sure that the set of active uh, functions is non-empty because this compactness and upper semi-continuity and the formula is a little bit simpler. The difference is small. Instead of appearing here epsilon active functions, I replace this set by this is smaller. They are the real active yeah, when uh, those functions such that attain exactly the same value of the supremum. So when epsilon is equal to zero, I have here zero and this is an equality. These are the active functions at the point X, at the reference point, okay? And so um, is what uh, I gain is the improvement when I impose uh, these conditions. In the first part, I want to keep these conditions, but maintaining or keeping my objective to neglecting, just to eliminating this part here and replacing by things yeah, relative to the rest of the functions, okay? And so the first, uh, I'm continuing here. If uh, I pretend to eliminate the normal cones, uh, what is possible to do is just a swimming quite a strong assumption. Is the continuity of F at the point. In this case, the normal cone, it confines the collapses to zero. I get uh, this formula here, but under this quite a strong assumption. Also in the same paper, uh, we gave certain characterizations of the normal cone, which are used by many authors uh, in our group of theoretical people in convex analysis, but they are not just involved the recession code of the closed convex hole, always with respect to the weak star topology, but the union of the graphs of all the conjugates, and here all the epigraphs, okay? In the affine case, when the functions are affine, this formula can be a little bit, okay, uh, turns out to be this expression, which is a little bit easier. Mm? It's more manageable, okay? But not completely satisfactory. We want something simpler. Um, come on to the new results. Uh, this, the first one is a lemma, just an exercise for students in convex analysis courses. And when I have my standard assumptions, compactness of T, and upper semi-continuity of these mappings with respect to T, I have this property here. 
This property is absolutely trivial when I have finite sets of indices. If this set capital T is finite, this is trivial. But it's very easy to imagine examples in which just in the real line, the effective domains of all the functions are the whole line and the effective domain of the supremum collapses to a point. And so this is not for free, but I have this relation and also this other when I assume compactness and upper semi-continuity. They, they are my standard compactness assumptions. Okay, the first idea to you is just to use this relation, well known for a function in uh, gamma node. If the function f is in gamma node, we know the epsilon side differential is non-empty. This is the recession cone, and this is valid for every epsilon. This is a nice result, very well known. But uh, I have to apply this expression for the supremum function here, not for an ordinary function. Okay, there are some formulas provided in different papers. For instance, I am recording here, or I'm quoting here, one by Hantut and Svensson, and uh, also by Perezaros. I use these formulas. But the formulas for the epsilon sub differential of the supremum involve a lot of uh, beta t epsilon sub uh, beta t sub differentials of these functions. And this beta t can be very large, and there is no possible control about these parameters. And so we want something else, and we try to improve eh, these formulas. And this is the main, not the main, the main theorem in the first part concerning the normal core. It's a symmetric formula, I like it. Consider my family functions, the supremum, this point in the effective domain, and assume that at the reference point, the, the value of the functions are uniformly bounded from below, okay? Then under compactness of T and upper semi-continuity, I have this formula for the normal cone to the effective domain. This is valid for every epsilon, and so, and this is the recession cone of the closed convex rule of the union of all the epsilon subdifferentials of all the functions here. When this particular mapping with x being fixed at the reference point is also lower semi-continuous, in this case, this condition is for free, it's implied, it's entailed by this condition here. And so I have this equality just under this compactness continuity assumptions. This is the first result. And uh, now I want to characterize the subdifferential of f, the supremum function at x. Again, the uh, hypotheses are the same. This uniform uh, boundness from below at the point x. And the subdifferential is contained here in this intersection. Observe that the first part is the same that in the formula with Alinescu, but the, the, the normal cone appears here replaced by the epsilon subdifferentials of the rest of functions, but affected, that's weighted by means of this epsilon here. Okay? If I intersect it, I have this inclusion, but the good news is that if f attains the minimum at the point x, this becomes an equality. If we compare with our formula in this paper, uh, uh, with, uh, also with Correa and Hantut, observe that the, the, the formula is similar, the first part is the same, but here I have the normal cone to these intersections, sections, find the dimensional sections intersecting with L. Remember that L is a finite uh, dimensional linear subspace passing through X. Here in this formula, we don't need to filter with respect to L, L disappears and also disappears the normal code. But I don't like to have inclusion here. And so in the same formula, in the, in the next slide, I'm presenting this formula under the same conditions, but with sum. This is exact formula for this expression, uh, for this, uh, for expressing the subdifferential. This is an equality. Here is the closed convex rule of this sum. Uh, uh, when I have zero here, I, ob I obtain precisely this part here. And when I multiply by epsilon, I have to sum this part with epsilon times 
these epsilon subgradients. Okay, and so uh, I, I think that there is something which is uh, okay. When I um, consider that all the functions are active, this is very special case. Yeah, in this, uh, I, this part disappears and uh, the sub differential at the point X is reduces to this formula. Mm, okay, this is an extension for infinitely many functions on the well known Broster formula. Yeah? When I say all the functions are active at the point, this can be very strong when I have infinitely many, but not so strange when there are infinitely many, when T is finite. Okay, the second objective now is to remove compactness assumptions. And the first uh, lemma is nice, also the proof, I like it very much, uh, is the first step in the process of getting uh, a reduction and uh, says the following, under the same assumptions, given one point in the effective domain, any element of the normal control the effective domain satisfy the following property. For every L, it's a finite uh, dimensional linear subspace, there is a sequence in the index set that the U star belongs to the normal cone to the domain of the supremum of this countable family, not the whole family, but intersected this effective domain with L. Okay. Applying this result, we uh, prove the following expression for the normal cone. Here, the normal cone is given by means of this symmetric, conceptually simple formula. This is the recession cone of the closed convex hull of the union of the epsilon sub differential of all these functions. But these are not individual functions. These functions are just the supremum of the maximum of the finite families. Remember that when I have the hypothesis of compactness and upper semi-continuities, these families are individual, are the individual functions, the data functions. But when I have no compactness, I have this formula, which is nice, is symmetric, it's perhaps not very operative, but we go a step further in the, in the following slide. Here, uh, observe the following. I'm introducing delta non-negative, here, there are the canonical simplices whose dimension is the cardinal of J. J are finite subsets of T. And this is the um, set of elements of the canonical simplex. So the these convex uh, combinations of the data functions in this finite set, the value of the reference point is close, delta close to the supremum, okay? This is the lambda in this uh, canonical simplices, verifying this proximity, the associated convex combination. Okay? In this case, the subdifferential is given by means of this expression. It's the intersection over epsilon of the closed convex school. Here again appears the same term, the union of the epsilon subdifferentials for the epsilon active uh, functions here. I have these terms, but observe the difference. This is just the epsilon subdifferential of the maximum of finitely many functions. Remember that here I'm considering functions of this type, which are, as I said in the previous, maximum of the functions in this family. But this family is finite, and so I can talk about maximum. Okay? If I recover the hypothesis of compactness eh, of these mappings eh, of the, sorry, of T and lower semi, eh, upper semi-continuum, these mappings, I get this formula here because in the following slide, we will see how to express this epsilon subgradient of the supremo of finite families by means of convex combinations of this type. But when I have compactness, I can have here only two functions just from one side, the active functions here and here the rest, but 
by means of these two elements, convex combinations, involving one function which is also active. It's here, it's also active. And so this expression in the case of compactness and upper semicontinuity is confined to this. Okay. How to get the epsilon subdifferential of the supremum of finite families? I can just take uh, the corollary to 811 in Thalinescu, or just to use this other formula we have derived in our paper. This is uh, just a very slight version of, of the formula in the book of Thalinescu. Given a finite family, remember the J is a finite subset and uh, functions in gamma node, and this is the maximum. Then for every x in the effective domain and any epsilon non-negative, okay, I have this expression, the epsilon subdifferential of f of x. This is what I need here, what I need here to plug here in this term. Just this epsilon subdifferential is the union over all the lambda in the n-dimensional canonical simplices of the subdifferential approximate subdifferential with this parameter here of this function at x. Just is a, this function is very simple. It's just this convex combination minus just the indicator function of the non no, positive or tan. Just that this function is of course concave. Okay, what can be observed is that these functions when x is fixed is concave actually is affine, an upper semi-continuous for every x in the domain. And this other function when lambda is fixed is convex. And so because the simplex uh, is uh, compact in Rn and uh, the effective domain is non-empty and convex, I can apply the minimax theorem, this minimax theorem. So this part uh, is the, this part here coincides with infimum and so we are k, uh, and this maximum is attained because this set is compact. So a very simple argument gives rise to this formula. I say this is very similar to the formula, actually is a reformulation of the formula in the book of, of Thalinescu, but it's an alternative to be applied. Actually, we apply in our calculations, okay. Uh, there are some applications of particular cases in specific frameworks. Assume that X is a reflexive Banach space. And I, I start from an arbitrary family again, everything is the same, assumptions are repeated every time. Observe here, the subdifferential of the function F, F is the supremum function, it's written here, is the union of the subdifferential of this uh, finite suprema, no finite suprema, so, sorry, is this function here is the supremum of a countable family. So J here is not finite, it's just countable. But the formula is quite simple and only is valid in the context of reflexive Banach spaces. So it's the union for every subset which is countable of the sub differential of the supremum of this family, which is uh, countable family, the, the supremum of countable families. And uh, in the, when the functions are affine, continuous are affine, in this case, we succeeded to get, this is in general, not necessarily in a reflexive Banach spaces. Okay, in a reflexive Banach space, uh, we can replace uh, in our formulas the uh, closure taken in the weak star topology by the strong topology. Yeah? in a reference in Banach space. And so this is more comfortable for many people who don't like just the weakest star topology. This is another, but I need uh, just to impose uh, this assumption, uh, reflexive Banach space for X. Okay, in general, when I'm handling with uh, affine functions, I get this expression for the subdifferential of the supremum, which is uh, quite nice. Here I, I have the 80 stars concerning epsilon active functions plus this term here and the closed convex hole. Okay. And just uh, in order to give uh, another straightforward application, 
uh, suppose this is a way to re-encounter, to refound, to refine, uh, sorry, one result uh, in the paper of Hantut and Svensson. Suppose the G is a function in gamma node X, uh, uh, is uh, lower, sem uh, uh, convex, proper, semi-continuous, and uh, X is one point, and size that the value is zero in order to make the things easier to simplify. In this case, the normal cone to this lower level set is given by means of the intersection over all the positive epsilons of the closure of this union here with epsilon are different sums of mu times g, the text. This is an application of other results because I can consider this uh, or define these family functions. I multiply g, my unique functions, by t. For every t, I get one function, and I'm considering the supremum of all these functions. Obviously, all these functions are in gamma node, and all of them, as well as the supremum function, take the value zero. At the point x, of course. Therefore, we can see that f is the indicator function of this uh, lower level set. And accordingly, we have the normal cone to this set is that the sub differential of f in x. I apply my, my formulas here, and I observe that this complicated set is nothing else than just the canonical simplex. And so replacing conveniently just in two lines more, I succeeded to prove this formula. Okay, this is the results I wanted to present here on just, uh, just presenting some references. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is all. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor Mato, for your talk. So, any question from the audience? Uh, May yes. I ask one? Rinia, please. Uh, Rinia, okay, sorry. Uh, no, I just was uh, clapping. I have no question. Ah, so. Then it is me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, f first of all, thank you very much, Marco. Very interesting presentation. And not only in terms of results, which look nice and uh, impressive, but also the procedure. Very logical presentation. Now we improve here, now we improve here. And um, uh, the theory looks complete. Is it? Is it over or are there any more problems? I know that uh, Hantut moved uh, to Alicante to support your group and it looks like you've already solved all, all the problems. Marco? It looks like we, we've lost the, the speaker. I think I think so. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> Abdurrahim, are you here? Can, can you answer this question? You you can't hide from me, Abdurrahim. I I see that you are. Here. I feel that you are here. The situation in Spain is indeed difficult. Uh, okay. Alex? Yes, Abrahim? Uh, yes, Abraham. I hear you. No, since my office is just near Marco, and it seems that he has some technical difficulties, so I try to join him and give him my, lap, my laptop. Ah, okay. Yeah? No, uh, yes, I understand your question. I, okay, Marco is returning, actually. Uh, you can see Marco. Is returning? Yeah. Yes. But uh, Marco, you are muted. I unmute yourself, Marco. Abdurrahim. Okay. Now, ah, Marco. Okay. Yep. 
Yeah, it's okay. Yes. Now it's okay. No, the problem is that I make a mistake. I just I wanted to minimize the screen. I know what I, you close it. What I, I, I don't was just to, to, to leave the session. No, now I'm still here. Sorry for my mistake. I and uh, I'm ready. There is time for questions. It was not a true. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I, I talked for 15 minutes asking questions after you <laughs> left. <laughs> yes? Okay. Uh, in short, now you have a very strong team uh, in Alicante working on this uh, supremum in issues. Uh, I, I mentioned that your theory which you presented, it, it looks complete. Uh, is it indeed uh, complete? You've solved all the problems, or are there any unsolved problems in terms of subdifferentiating supremum functions? Okay, uh, I, I think that very strictly from the strict point of view, uh, open problems, uh, real uh, open problems, I think there are not many. What we have done here is just something with aesthetical purposes. Just, okay. Uh, it's nice to have symmetric formulas where instead of having one part with epsilon active functions and the other with normal comes to defective domain, which in principle is quite difficult to be characterized, we wanted to get expressions with only functions, only the data functions is what is uh, done in this, uh, in this work. And so, let me say, it's not some revolutionary result. Okay, it's aesthetical, but completes the theory. Yeah. But Marco, this is not my point. Indeed, it, it looks very beautiful and aesthetically, I like the presentation very, very much. Uh, I just see that uh, no, no, there are no gaps in your theory and uh, I can't contribute. This is my worry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to the chairman. I have a question, if that's, that's okay. Yeah, do you want to? Yes, okay. uh, Sure, sure. Look, uh, when I often look at these results, I, I, I like to think of them in terms of applying the subdifferential to the support function, which is talking about exposed points. And of course, in infinite dimensions, you don't always <coughs> have such exposed points. So having silent subdifferentials is a perfectly logical thing to study. Uh, when you don't have any infinite dimensions. And so a lot of these uh, uh, results are really about, if you look at that terms, in terms of representing the sort of xylem exposed points of intersections of sets that are convex, you know. That's really what they are when you try and translate them into that kind of framework. And, uh, <coughs> and so, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, depending upon how you define the uh, duality for your subdifferential, um, determines topology in which you take the closure when you're looking at these intersections. And, uh, uh, and I, I wonder whether, whether this is an interesting thing to try and think about to translate these uh, formula into things which are talking about how can you represent uh, intersections of sort of convex sets in terms of their kind of silent exposed structures, if you like. And, uh, um, and, and, and if you change the duality uh, from uh, thing, things that would uh, still have some sort of well-defined uh, duality for convex uh, duality, then you, you're talking about something to do with taking closures somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you would like to comment, uh, I mean, it's just a, a thought that I sometimes have when I look at these formulas and I think, well, you know, for instance, I mean, you can always have uh, symmetric dualities uh, that uh, occur and uh, then uh, depending upon where you frame these, these uh, formula from, then you're talking about different topologies, I guess. Yes, uh, okay. We, without any uh, additional assumption about uh, the underlying space, it is difficult to get something avoiding just the weak start topology. But uh, okay, in final dimensions, <laughs> no problem. And, assuming additional properties as uh, reflexivity, Banach reflexivity uh, is possible. But I don't, uh, I, I, perhaps I didn't catch uh, properly the sense of your question. Sorry, because it's, it's difficult. Uh, 
I've done uh, watching you only your name, Andrew Ebehat, and is it? Oh, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. You have to understand. Sorry, sorry, Andrew. But, oh, that, that, that's okay. Um, I mean, for, for instance, um, uh, I mean, I presume that most of your formulas, you're uh, you're in a primal space, and your uh, yeah. sub differentials are in the dual space. So you're in a weak star topology, I guess. Yes. You are, and so you're um, you're looking essentially at uh, uh, there. At you're looking at the uh, uh, if, you, if you're taking the uh, you're looking at uh, things which are exposed in the sense of a, uh, a, a an element of the dual space, which is trying to expose uh, a set. And mm -hmm. so you're trying to look at uh, the structure. If you're thinking of these things in terms of intersections of sets, you're trying to describe the way in which you deco decompose the, uh, the the exposed points or describe the set in terms of maybe it's sort of its exposed points and the maybe the recession directions, which are these normal cones, I guess, in that, in that sense, you know. Um, but, but I suppose you could also frame these things the other way around from, uh, from something in a dual space and sort of try and, uh, if you had a symmetric duality, dual, dual the other way around. And then you'd be looking at uh, sort of a weak star exposed points, you know, in a dual point? space of sets which are taking intersections. And then you're talking about weak star topology. You know what I mean? They try and describe weak star closures and intersections of sets. Hmm. And then when you frame it that way, it's actually a much more interesting problem because uh, that's a very vexed problem, right? Yes, okay. This connects yeah. with, uh, okay, the comment of, <laughs> of <laughs> Alex. No? So, uh, perhaps there are some possibilities just to, to go deep in the in our research just by taking or starting from a, a different perspective, point of view. And so I'm very interested in talking with you more just to, to, to know yeah, about your, your ideas and, and just to, to know if there is some publication, some paper um, related with these ideas. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have so many time for the first uh, talk is over. So Thank you, Professor Marco, again for an inter interesting talk.